Let's start, though, with that phone call between the prime minister and premiers. Earlier this week, Prime Minister Trudeau publicly called on them to, quote, do the right thing and impose tougher restrictions if necessary as the number of cases climbs. New modeling in Ontario alone shows the province could see up to 6,000 cases a day of COVID-19 by December. Let's bring in Dominic LeBlanc. He's the federal minister of intergovernmental affairs, and he's with us from Moncton, New Brunswick. Hi, Minister. Good to have you back on the show. Hi, Vashi. Thanks for having me. I want to ask you about the call that, that is about to take place with the premiers and the prime minister. I imagine that, that you'll be on that call as you have been in the past. Two days ago, the prime minister called on premiers to, quote, do the right thing and prioritize public health to counter the recent rise in COVID-19 cases across much of the country. Which premiers was he directing that message at? Well, Vashi, I think the Prime Minister was reflecting a sentiment that we've heard from hundreds and hundreds of Canadians in a whole series of, of contexts. People are very concerned, as, as our premiers, as our other uh, leaders responsible for public health and healthcare systems, about this second wave. The numbers are, are worrisome uh, in many jurisdictions, and I think the Prime Minister was uh, reflecting the concern that the government of Canada has that we have to put the maximum number of public health measures in place, not only to protect people, but to protect the economic recovery that must necessarily come after the pandemic. And the finance minister and others have said that we've put in place a series of uh, income supports for people, of supports for businesses that are negatively affected by some of these necessary decisions, precisely so that local and provincial authorities can make the tough decisions that, that have to be made in the interests of public health. I think that's what he was reflecting. He made those comments, though, unprompted, unprompted rather, at the beginning of the press conference. And, and you know as well as I do, there's pressure, for example, in Ontario and Alberta for the governments in those provinces to do more because of rising case counts. So I'm curious if this was just sort of a blanket supportive statement or if there was a message there, for example, for the premiers of Ontario and Alberta. I, I think the message, Vashi, was to, to all provincial leaders, municipal leaders, public health uh, officials across the country. Uh, the government of Canada is obviously there to be as supportive as we possibly can be. Uh, but those with those direct responsibilities have to take these difficult decisions. And I think I would note that governments, including uh, the two you mentioned, uh, certainly I, I saw Premier Ford in Ontario, uh, again, taking a, a series of additional measures that are necessary in his judgment. So from our perspective, premiers are taking this responsibility um, and we just want to encourage them to continue to do so. But also, uh, they should know, as Canadians do, that the government of Canada is there to where we can and support uh, provincial and local health authorities, but most importantly, to support Canadians and Canadian businesses so that these tough decisions uh, can be mitigated in terms of people having the income support uh, and businesses having the support uh, that they that they need through a difficult circumstance, none of which they created. And I, and I do want to ask you about that help, but I just want to be clear, your government does not feel that any premiers are being lax on public health restrictions. Vash, you, you wouldn't expect me to call first ministers lax in these public health uh, circumstances. That that wouldn't be appropriate. What Canadians want is their governments to work together constructively. That has been a success from the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, provincial governments, uh, territorial governments, the government of Canada have worked extraordinarily closely together. Um, and I think the Prime Minister and certainly my colleagues in the federal cabinet are saying to their provincial counterparts that we want to continue to do that, but we also want provinces and local leaders uh, to make the tough decisions uh, in the interest of public health uh, and know that the government of Canada will be there to support them and their citizens as they have to make some of these difficult decisions. Nobody wants to go back to the very uh, blunt instrument that was used in the early weeks of the pandemic, uh, sort of a general shutdown across the board. Obviously, in jurisdictions where it's appropriate from a public health perspective and where professional advice would allow more targeted closures, that's preferable. But we've seen some jurisdictions where the surge uh, is, is so concerning that they've had to take, once again, some more sort of all-encompassing measures uh, and our hope is that those decisions don't spread to multiple jurisdictions, 
because Vashi, the government of Canada can and has been helping. We've seen it in long-term care homes with seniors, with contact tracing, with uh, rapid test equipment and so on and uh, PPE. We're gonna continue to do that, obviously, but we've gotta get to a situation where we don't have uncontrollable surges, uh, uncontrolled surges in multiple jurisdictions then the government of Canada's ability to sort of backstop and support uh, might be stretched as well. And we certainly don't want to get to that point. I, I want to ask you about that support. And, and first and foremost, the portfolio you're in charge of. So that $19 billion in safe restart money, is that all out the door? Um, most of it is. Uh, some of it, uh, some of it will, will be going in the, in the coming weeks. But again, Vashi, that argument from some people that, that I've seen a receivable from the government of Canada is bankable. If you have a receivable from the government of Canada, any commercial lending institution will lend you the money. So the idea that, quote, the money hasn't yet been transferred doesn't stop a provincial government or a territorial government from making the decisions they have to make because they know very well that that money is coming. So how uh, much of it is left is to be transferred? With personal per how much of it, Minister? Sorry? sorry, how much of it, Minister, is left to be transferred? Uh, again, Vashi, well, take, for example, the safe restart of schools. Uh, that's a specific example where it was a $2 billion uh, transfer to help provincial and territorial governments around schools, which are entirely in their jurisdiction, but we wanted to be helpful so they could take additional measures. $1 billion has already been transferred, but the premiers agreed, all of them, to write a letter to the prime minister in December to tell Canadians how they spent the first billion and that will then unlock the second billion that will be, that will be transferred in the beginning of January. So the provinces know uh, the timetable of all of these transfers, Vashi. There's no surprises for them. And we should be careful not to pretend that somehow there's a mystery in when the money is going to be transferred. The government of Canada made a commitment. The premiers know that we're good uh, for that commitment. And now we all need to work together uh, yeah. to take the measures necessary to protect Canadians. I take your point. I'll just tell you why I'm asking. It's because when the Prime Minister made that comment, obviously a number of reporters turned to premiers and said, hey, this is what the Prime Minister is saying. He's saying if you need more help, you know, the, the, the federal government will be there. And a number of them, including Doug Ford, including Francois Legault in Quebec, mm -hmm. said, well, we need more money. And so I'm just trying to ascertain. I take your point that it's bankable. You know, money that the federal government says is coming is, is likely coming. But you haven't answered how no, much no, of it Vashi, is actually It's not likely coming. It, it, Vashi, okay, it's, it's not, coming. It's not Fine. likely coming. It is coming. But, but you haven't answered when. But according to the schedule that the premiers agreed to with the government of Canada, Vashi, again, there's no, it, it is a distraction and frankly doesn't behoove any of us to be bogged down in, well, is it next Monday or is it Thursday that the money is going to be deposited in the account? Uh, the provinces can spend what they need to spend knowing that that money is coming and is committed from the government of Canada. That, to me, is the most important thing. Uh, all of us need to focus on, on the measures that protect Canadians and secure them in this difficult time instead of sort of checking your bank account every hour to see if the money's been deposited. But they say they need more money in those accounts. That's why I'm asking you, is, is there more money coming down the pipe? Or, or is your government open to that? Have those discussions started at all? Or is this conjecture mostly? Well, again, provinces always want more money from the government of Canada. That's not new. That probably goes back to Confederation. Um, we have said in the context of the pandemic, we will do what is necessary for as long as is necessary to protect Canadians. And that includes obviously supporting provinces uh, in terms of health measures, contact tracing. Uh, we haven't talked about vaccine rollout again, which is a critical part of the federal provincial conversation, uh, how we can work with provinces around ensuring those vaccines are as expeditiously and as, as quickly as possible made available to Canadians. So those are the discussions that are ongoing. Um, the important thing, Vashi, is that the provinces use the money that we agreed to, the $19 billion dollars, in the safe restart agreement plus the two billion for the safe return to school that that money be used in the best way possible as quickly as possible and then if we get to a circumstance where there's need for more money in areas as important as contact tracing as public health measures as surge capacities in various uh, health jurisdictions 
obviously the government of Canada will be happy to have those conversations. Are you confident that money is being used by provinces expeditiously? Because you, you know there's a report out, for example, from the Financial Accountability Office in Ontario saying that there was unused funds in provincial coffers while you, you were negotiating with them. We're not sure if there's still about six billion left. Like, are you sure the money you're giving to provinces is being used? Well, I, I'm sure provinces, Vashi, are doing the best they can uh, uh, to make the investments necessary uh, to protect Canadians in this very difficult context. We put $19 billion additional transfers available, as I said, um, in, in September. Uh, you know, a, a huge percentage of that money is in their coffers now. Uh, it's, it's, it's 18 billion or more that the provinces have right now of that 19 billion. The rest of it is gonna come and they have an obligation uh, to use that in the best way possible to protect Canadians. I, I don't think any province in any way wants to take taxpayers' money and not use it in this urgent context in the best way they can. Okay, Minister, I'll leave it there. I appreciate your time very much. Well, thanks for having me, Vashi. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.